Today, the learned Chief Justice ruled in the two elections petitions filed challenging the March 2nd general and regional elections. You would recall that when these petitions were filed, um, the Attorney General as well as the lawyers appearing for uh, res uh, Respondent Bharat Jagdeo had filed summonses to strike out the petition, in particular one of them, on the grounds that the requisite documents were not served within the prescribed time. In particular, Respondent David Granger was not served with the documents, um, with the petition themselves and the accompanying documents within the time stipulated by the law. And also, um, in an effort to get, to circumvent that argument, the petitioners sought to argue that Mr. Granger was not a necessary party and therefore there was no necessity to serve him. So those were the legal issues that the court had to deal with. Um, a lot of legal submissions were made from all sides and uh, um, the court took some time to read the submissions and today the court delivered uh, the ruling. The court essentially ruled that Firstly, that Mr. Granger was not served within the time prescribed either with the petition or the affidavit of service and the other accompanying documents. And the efforts that were made to repair that damage abysmally failed to do so. Affidavits were filed and all sorts of explanations were proffered by those who had the responsibility to serve respondent David Granger. And the uh, excuses that they put forward hardly made sense. The excuses themselves began to collide with each other. And in short, it was a total mess uh, made in an attempt to defend the non-service of Mr. Granger within the time prescribed. Now, the law is very clear. When election petition documents or the election petitions are not served within the time stipulated. The law is very strict, the law is very rigid, and the law says that the petition is a nullity and must be dismissed, that the court has no jurisdiction to deal with a, a, a petition which is affected by non-service or late service in relation to any of the documents and 100 years of case law authorities support that proposition right across the globe. Some of those cases were cited, including Guyanese cases. And secondly, that Mr. Granger was a necessary party to the respondent, uh, as a, was a necessary respondent to the petition, and therefore must be named and was properly named, and therefore him being a party to be named was required to be served. That Mr. Granger represented a list of candidates who uh, won seats in the National Assembly, and it would have been wrong, it would have been um, against the principles of natural justice, it would have been against the principles of fairness not to have named Mr. Granger a party. So the argument advanced that Mr. Granger was not a necessary party was rejected out of hand. Again, there are a plethora of cases right across the English Commonwealth, including Diana, that decided that point in terms of who should be made a respondent to an elections petition. And the cases clearly say, examining the law in almost every jurisdiction where the issue has arisen, the cases say uniformly and consistently that every party that contests an election must be named in an elections petition. So the attempt to get Mr. Granger out of the petition as not a necessary party, thereby 
um, making it unnecessary to serve him with a petition, that argument also failed. The Chief Justice, in a very long, reasoned, and very comprehensive judgment, examined all the legal issues at length, applied all the relevant case law, and dealt with every argument in a very admirable way presented. And those that Her Honor rejected, she rejected them with reason. And those that Her Honor accepted, she accepted them with supporting authorities. I believe it's a very, very, very good judgment and a judgment that will guide us in the future. Um, it is quite ironic, actually, that uh, 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 AP and new AFC uh, engineer, the petition, got dismissed for non-service on Mr. David Granger. That by itself tells a very tragic tale of incompetence. And that is the type of uh, um, conduct that has permeated all the litigations filed by the APNU AFC. And if I may go a little further, it is a type of characteristic that permeates their government. Um, or permeate their actions when they were in government. So that petition was dismissed and the costs were awarded um, uh, to be assessed uh, in relation to that petition. It was deemed a nullity and dismissed. The other petition now, that is the one that challenges the legality and constitutionality of Order 60 under which the recount was done, the court rule will go forward. Uh, the court further directed that that petition will go forward in a particular way, that legal arguments will be made, submissions that is, will be made by the petitioner and will be responded to by the respondents and reply, if necessary, by the, commission, by the petitioners. And at that stage, it will be determined whether evidence is required to take the petition forward. Um, remember, if, if, for example, it is found that the um, elections were held under order, the recon, sorry, were held under order 60 and order 60 turns out to be unconstitutional, does that mean that AP and UAFC won the elections? How do you determine how you move forward? Would that resurrect Mingo's declaration? So these are issues that have to be addressed by way of evidence. We would like to lead evidence, to put into evidence in particular, the statements of poll, because that determines how the voters voted and the statements of reconce. And we need to get that into the evidence. And therefore, we have asked permission. We have asked permission that once um, once the case reaches a particular stage, that we be permitted to lead evidence. Um, and the court said, yes, we will be afforded that opportunity at the appropriate time. Um, importantly, GCOM, GCOM's lawyer um, asked for permission to lead evidence as well, because some damaging allegations have been made against GCOM and GCOM in, in indicated to the court that it required uh, permission to put evidence before the court in terms of answering those um, allegations. And the court said that at the appropriate time, those directions will be given. Another significant ruling that the court made was to preserve all the election documents. Because under the law, after the expiration of one year, the chief elections officer can burn the documents. And that was drawn to the court's attention and a preservatory order has been granted in relation to all the documents. In relation to the statements of poll and the statements of recount, the court made a further order that those documents should be placed in the custody of the registrar of the Supreme Court. And the court made such an order and indicated that uh, Marshall 
will serve that order on GCOM. Um, dates have been given, a date in April for all the parties to return to the court, um, and then I suppose further directions will be given.